In this video we will mix two kind of PBR texture together in Blender and paint some part grass and some part rocky. It's a part of entire course. I will leave the link for the course in the description. Please hit the like button on the videos that inspire you and click the subscribe button to become a valued member of our community. Visit our website at artstudio313.net and immerse yourself in a world of artistic exploration. Here is a glimpse of what awaits you. Without any further ado, let's dive into tutorial. In this video, I will texture paint the ground. Let's go to the shading from layout. Now select the ground in the viewport. Then in shading tab, click on new to create a new material. Switch to solid mode, then rename the material to ground. I have two kinds of texture, which I will mix those in my shading tab. And I will paint some parts grass and some parts rock on this image texture. Let's drag and drop the rock texture in the shading tab and connect it to the principal BSDF. Now we need to duplicate these two nodes and move them at the below. We need to change the second texture instead of rocky to the grass. In the left bottom corner, I have image editor open. So hold down Ctrl and left click on the image texture to see a preview of that in image editor. Now it's time to mix these two principal BSTF. In previous video, I did enable the node regular add-on. With that enabled, we can hold on Ctrl plus Shift and drag with your right click from one to other. And it will make these two nodes automatically. I play around with the roughness and specular for both of the principal nodes. Set the roughness high because we don't want to receive any reflection. If you want to hide node, you simply need to click on this small icon or select them and press H. In this way, we have more space to work with. Let's switch to material preview to see what is happening in the viewport. Select the ground and solo that. We get this bad result because we didn't unwrap the floor. Now it's time for UV unwrapping, which is one of the most important part. We need to unwrap it to get a really nice texture. For unwrapping, let's go to UV editing from shading. In the UV editing section, we have two important panels. The right panel is viewport as you know already, and the left side is UV editor panel. In the UV editor panel, we can edit and unwrap the UVs. In the viewport, press A to select all of the faces of your ground. As soon as you select that, you will see all the separated UVs in the UV editor panel. This cylinder was UV unwrapped by Blender itself. But we need to add some mark seam and UV unwrap that manually. Press 2 for edge mode. Then select the top edge loop. Then hold down shift and alt click to select another edge loop. After that right click and choose mark sim. You will see the marks in the red line around the selected edges. I need to add another mark sim at the center of the cylinder to open up its UV. So select the top edge, hold down ctrl and shift and select the bottom edges. Then right click and add mark sim. Now press A to select everything, then press U. U is the shortcut for UV unwrapping. 
and choose Unwrap. Now look at in the UV editor panel. We got three different UV islands. Each of these pieces of the UV call for UV islands and all of them in this square box called for UV map. In situation like this, we need to work more a bit on the bigger island to make it a straight line. Let's talk about some of the options in the UV editor panel. At the top left corner, we have the vertex, edge and faces. As we had in the edit mode, you can use shortcut 1, 2 and 3 to activate those. The last option is called for UV select mode. This option allows you to select entire islands individually. While when you are in vertex, edge or face, you are not able to select the entire islands. But with the help of UV select mode, you can select each of these islands as you wish. Let's select this bigger island with the help of the UV select mode. We can do that manually by hand, but it is really time consuming. Instead, I have a very cool add-on, it called for UV square. As it sounds, it will convert each of these UV to a square shape. I put this add-on in the project file. You can install it as you install the EasyHDRO add-on. Once you install it, it will appear in this top right side of the UV editor panel. After selecting the island, press on the grid by shape. You might get some error, but it is fine. Then click on Reef Faces. As soon as you click on Reef Faces, it will convert the island to a square shape. Now I will rotate my longer UV island. Then I will select everything. And from UV, choose the pack island. I rotate my islands because my texture is a tile texture, but if you use some other texture, which is not tile, you have to be careful. So let's go to shading from UV editing. In the shading tab, I will play around with the factor. When the factor is set to 0.5, it shows 50-50 of each of the image texture. But when I set the factor all the way up to 1, it shows me the second slot, which is the grass texture. And when I set the factor to 0, it shows me whatever is plugged into the first slot of the mix shader. Let's grab the top texture and press Ctrl and T. Using this shortcut, we'll set up these two nodes automatically. The UV of texture coordinate is plugged into the vector of the mapping node. Let's connect the vector of our mapping to the vector of our grass texture. In the viewport, the size of the stone texture is too big. Let's make this smaller by setting the scale of the mapping to a higher value, to 3 or 5. Let's set the factor to 1. Now you will see the grass texture is scaled down as well. That's because we connected the mapping node to both of the textures. And when we scale it, it will scale for both of the textures. In viewport, let's press number the slash to get everything back. I feel the size of the grass is still large, so let's set the scale in the mapping to 10. Now much better. Because our texture is tile, we are not going to see some seams on our ground. Except those places that we added Marxim and UV editor. But how should we paint some parts grass and some parts stones? Well, we can do that by adding a new image texture. Connect the color output of the image texture to the factor. Now click on new and name it mask.
In the resolution tab, set a good resolution for our image texture. I recommend to use 2K or 4K. Use a high quality image texture. Then if you want to use it in game engine, you can decrease the resolution of your image texture in the Photoshop to 2K or even 1K. The default setting for me is OK. And I leave the color to black as it is. You can change it to other color as you wish. In this section, whatever color you choose, it will appear in the texture painting tab. Now click on OK. Let's quickly demonstrate the invert node. After the mask image texture, I will add invert, as this allows me to switch between the grass texture and the stone texture by sliding its factor to the left and right. Let's get rid of it. Now let's open up the texture painting tab. The background of our UV map is black. That's because we had black color when we created the image texture. In the browse material to be linked, it selected the mask image texture automatically. We set the strength all the way up to one and the radius is set to 50 pixel. In viewport, let's switch to material preview. You can paint with white color and erase the painted area with a black color. You can switch to black and white color by pressing X in the viewport or by clicking on this arrow icon on the brush setting tab. Now I will paint grass under the tree roots. Leave someplace the stone texture. And this way it will look more interesting. As I said before, in some area if you need, you can press X and erase with a black color. Then press X again to paint with a white color. In some case that you will see the mark seem clearly on our ground, we can print the ground structure on that part to cover those places. If you set the strength to about half, you will receive less effects of the grass brush. And you need to paint multiple times to see full effects. So let's set it back to one. You always can take a look at different examples of the hand painting grass textures. Google is a good source for finding some. At the same time that I'm painting, you will see on the left side which places I'm painting now. You even can directly paint into the UV map in the image editor. But when you paint in viewport, you will see in real time what is going on.
A small advertisement is coming now. If you are interested in learning texture painting in Blender, I've created a separate course. In this course, I will teach texture painting step by step in Blender. This course has a chapter that starts from learning fundamental of Blender and goes up to modeling and texture painting. If you are interested, make sure to check it out. Back to the course. Until now that you worked hard and painted over your image texture, you have to save your texture painting map. They store on the image text means that this is not saved. To save that, click on the image at the top left corner, then click on save as and choose a location to save. The file format is set to PNG, which is ok. You can change it to JPEG or other formats as well. And the color is RGBA. And the RGBA color means that this is going to be an alpha or transparent background. In this case, I don't want to save it as alpha. So instead, let's click on RGB. And at the end, click on save as image. Now you will see your saved image texture on the folder that you saved. And if you look closer, the star on the image text has been gone, because we have saved that. Let's go to shading to check our painting. I think I need to paint more in some areas. When I try to paint, it doesn't allow me and say a missing material texture detected. The reason is that we need to select the ground in the shading to be able to paint on that in the texture painting tab. I will spend some more time to create a good walkway by erasing the grasses that I painted on the stones. So I go really close to the ground and with the black color selected, I remove the grasses. Ctrl S to save your project. Okay, that's about it. And we will continue in the next video.